Wonderful. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to week four of Marketing Mastermind. Today, we are talking about how to have an effective website. I'm so excited for this call. I know a lot of you are as well. Everyone wants to know how to have a more effective website. And I have an awesome, amazing expert guest to help walk us through um, today's session. But before we get started, um, I just want to obviously bring up um, our action items and make sure that you guys are actually putting together these action items like we keep like we keep talking about. Um, this is that's a big part of the course, you know, making sure that every time we're talking about a specific topic that you guys are you guys are then um, taking action, putting together some action ideas and actually doing the stuff that you know you need to do in order to move your business forward. And uh, this is week four, so we're halfway through the course. And um, I've been connecting with each of you um, and just kind of seeing where you are, but I will be reaching out to you this week just because I want to talk to you guys about what you guys have going on. And um, we're kind of halfway through, so just to get some feedback from you and see how I can support you from now until the end of the course. But um, this session and then the next couple sessions are going to be very much around website and social media and creating a community. And I know that's what a lot of you are really interested in doing, so, um, so I'm excited to go through. Oh. I have, I have our... Our uh, our awesome guest. He's uh he's taking control. I'm gonna turn it over to him in a couple minutes. Um, so this week, um, I wanted to also just bring up those tools that that we talked about because just like your action items that you know you need to be executing on every week, it's also important for you to um to make sure that you're using the best use of your time. And in doing that, there's a lot of tools out there. Um, that you can use to kind of help you manage your time and and help you focus on those right things. Again, kind of when you when you put together those action items and you know what you need to do, and then take those tools that are going to help support you, whether it's more time management or um, maybe some kinds of technology that makes things a little bit quicker, easier, faster. And um, we have some stuff that we're going to talk about today when we're going through um, website that we can share with you. Um, so today we're talking all about websites and how to have a more effective website. And I'm really excited to um, to have our special expert guest because he is someone that I have been working with now for a couple of years. And um, he and I became friends when I started my first company a couple years ago with um, focusing a lot on social media. And uh, I was introduced to him and we became friends. And then when I started getting more in the digital space, then he kind of <laughs> became my go-to person on a lot of things, e-commerce, social media, Google ads, pay-per-click. I mean, he really has his hands in everything. Um, he is our super awesome, amazing expert guest, Evan Weber. Um, he's the owner of Experience Advertising, so he has a full-service digital marketing firm. Um, he has over 15 years of experience in e-commerce digital and digital marketing. He's worked with a number of different startups um, and really taken them from kind of just an idea and a concept and helped them grow. Um, and what's cool is that he's worked with a lot of different industries, so from brick-and-mortar companies to people that just have big e-commerce sites that are looking to really grow. So he's really an expert in this space. In the affiliate marketing world, he's very well known and he speaks all over and um, and he always gets lots of accolades for his um, presentations and it's usually like, you know, the number one most attended and all that fun stuff. So I could go on and on about Evan. He and I have um, done a lot of stuff together and I work with him with oh, some of my clients. Don't let me stop. I know, right? I could go on a roll, but no, he really has been such a wealth of information for me and a great mentor and friend to me as well. And um, it's been fun to learn from him and also work on a number of projects together. Um, so everyone welcome Evan Weber. <laughs> And I've sent Evan over um, a lot of the um, a lot of your websites. So, like I promised, we're going to be going through some people's websites, and we have tons of examples and 
you'll 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 enjoy it because he's he's going to share a lot of different um, examples and of different sites and th- of, of people that are doing things well. And I know that's really helpful when we're talking. We're not just talking about concepts. We're going to really show you how people are doing things well online. So well, thank you for having me, Kate. Yes, thank you, Evan. And 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 I'm super excited because after um, today, we'll go through a lot of the the website stuff, and then I'm going to have Evan come back and and talk about some other things moving forward. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. If you guys have any questions while we go, please um, just t- type it in the chat box. And Evan and I are going to kind of have like a little conversation going back and forth, and um, and then just ask any questions, and then I will um, I'll, I'll ask them while we're going through the call because I know a lot of you have a lot of different questions regarding your your websites, or for those of you that are putting together a website, um, you obviously want to know those things as well. So the first thing is that you need to have an effective website, not just a pretty website. And this is something that, um, that we see a lot. People just get really excited to put up some really beautiful site and they say, hey, people really love my site. It looks so good. Um, but it really isn't bringing in business or getting leads or anything. So it doesn't matter how pretty your site is. You really need to focus on the key elements that make it a good site that it's actually attracting people and that you're converting those people into new leads or new clients and customers. That's right. Um, I always say a pretty website is a mere foundation for making improvements. So while while it is super important to have an aesthetically pleasing looking website, um, a lot of times graphic designers will design a website that may not be trained in things like having calls to action, having you know, a prominently placed phone number or having, you know, reviews and testimonials presented prominently. So a graphic designer may not know what actually is going to resonate with your website visitors. So once you have a nice looking website, then you can add little things to it, things like live chat, things like testimonials, call to action above the fold, a really well utilized header. Um, things like that. There are many trust logos. There are many, you know, accoutrement as as you might might say um, to add to a website. Once you have a website up, and then there's many things you can layer on top of it in order to give it more interaction with with users, so it's not so two dimensional. Uh, and I think that's that's a very important concept to make one's website very interactive with with your visitors. A lot of companies don't do that well enough. And what's cool is that there's so many tools out there now that make things really easy, like the live chat. And um, and we're going to go through some people's websites, and I'm sure Evan will share. You know, obviously he's going to share his opinion on all those things. But the the nice part is is that even if you are maintaining your own site, there's really simple ways to get some of this stuff up. So I'm excited to go through people's sites, but we'll move okay. forward. So we're, that's what we're going to do. So we're going to talk about the components of a success of, of an effective website. And, um, you know, we could go on and on and on with so many different things that you need to have or should have. Um, so we're kind of keeping it at first off, just the foundation. You have to get your foundation right. And then you can start adding a lot of these things. So oftentimes, you know, we don't want people to get too overwhelmed with all the stuff that you can add. We have to have the effective website. Make sure you have these first components set and ready and you're driving traffic to the site and then you can, you know, incorporate some of the other things. Sometimes people just try to put too many, too many widgets and too many fun things that they, that they think are going to uh, be helpful and they end up not utilizing it. And, and you don't want to do that. You don't want to get people to your site and then have them not be converting. So we'll talk through right. first, yeah. just some of the, the main right. components. There is the concept of overdoing having too many little widgets on your website but in general that's not the problem most most companies have too few or just the wrong ones for instance some companies have a live chat widget where you can chat with your website visitors but they place it in the wrong place or it doesn't pop up proactively at the right time or they don't use it on the right page so while you need these tools and widgets to function on your website uh, you have to use them properly 
you know, so, but there are certain components of an effective website, most of what we just chatted about, so when we start going through people's websites, then we'll make those suggestions and I'll show you some additional tools, you know, on the web. So the first thing, and I'm sure all of you have heard this or keep hearing how important it is to have a mobile optimized site. And especially now with all the changes that Google has made and kind of reprimanding those small businesses who are not mobile optimized, this is, I mean, this now just needs to be, especially for those that are putting together a new site now, it, it's just so easy to have a mobile optimized site and with all the themes that you can get out there. So this is just this is just necessity, whereas it used to not be as much so. Um, so having a site that is optimized for when someone goes on their smartphone or their tablet, that they're seeing it in a different way than they see it if they're on their desktop. Right, and, and I just saw I just saw a more recent statistic that 70% of e-commerce purchasers are purchasing from a uh, smartphone now. Um, actually, let me uh, let me pull up a, a tool right here. This is this is called Duda Mobile, and this this is this is actually a really cool tool that if you already have a website and you want to convert it to a mobile version, you can create a mobile version of your website, and it'll it'll walk you through and give you a a, a sample version. Actually, I could pull I could, I could pull somebody's website. Let's let's um let's do this one. Use. It's it's really cool little widget because what it does is it'll redirect anyone that is coming to your website on a mobile device, and it will show them a mobile, a mobile version of your website without you having to even redesign the current website. So it's it's a nice way to just create a mobile version that people will see when they open up your site on their smartphone. Um, that see they they have a really nice little walkthrough here and you can choose um, let me let me close this wait how do I slide this side thing in um, okay do you know how to slide the side thing in is that it okay I got it um, so it'll it'll literally let you build a mobile version of your website right from your current website but you have to go through a step-by-step -step process of, you know, picking the navigation, things of that nature. You take it right from your website, pop it in. Um, perhaps this website we're, we're, we're doing is not a great example because it doesn't look like it has a navigation header. Um, let's see. Let's see if this gives us this one. I probably should have been a little bit more prepared to do this at the moment, but um, uh, maybe that wasn't a good um, example say because it doesn't have the right content. But in any event, this tool will let you build a mobile version of your website and then publish it. And then when someone comes to your site on a mobile phone, it'll show a different version of the website. So that's a really cool tool. Yeah, I mean, mobile mobile is everything because, you know, I went to a conference three years ago and three to four years ago and a high-tech IT conference, and they were saying mobile is everything then. So now it's really come on super strong. And even things like advertising in Google, they're driving people straight to call the business right from the ad. And it just has a call button. They never, they never even may visit your website from a Google ad. They'll just click the, click the call button, and it'll just call your business, and they'll, they'll inquire as to what they, they need, what the, you know, service or product they need, and you just sell them on the phone or give them, you know, directions to the store, whatever it may be. So mobile, everything needs to be geared towards mobile, uh, and obviously the, the younger generation, they're completely mobile. They don't even use computers. So everything is already headed towards mobile and already there. So your website, you know, you can even have an app, an app version of your Facebook page on the phone that you can give out to people. There's many cool things you can do 
to get yourself mobile optimized, and it, and it needs to it needs to be a focus. Otherwise, you're cutting yourself off to a large percentage of potential customers that just can't easily use your web presence or find you know find their way to to calling you or booking that appointment if you don't have a really good mobile strategy. Evan, is that is that due to mobile thing? Is that like a monthly fee? Yeah, it's it's I believe it's nine bucks a month. Okay. Um, I wish I could um, let me see if I can get a, a better um, it, it's cool because you can you can add all kinds of components to it basically building your own little mobile site you can put a map in here things like that put in your address contact form so and then you, of course you can put gallery stuff images let's say you want an image up here which is you can so upload cool. image. it's so cool how they they've created all these different apps and stuff for people because they're so you don't have to be techie to put them together they're just they make them so easy there's right. There's a little bit of weirdness because the example site we use doesn't have a lot of images that can be pulled from the site. But normally, it'll pull all the images from the site. You you choose your image and then you just put it in here. Well, not like that, but like this. And continue on building pages. And then basically. This is this is not exactly for you know Velux Boutique. It's it didn't pull the images right. We could do this, but we'd have to upload the images and then drop them in here. And then you make the then you make the site you know live. It'll show the mobile version. Um, and so this is where they charge you seven bucks a month, or they give you a free version okay. with ads. Yeah. So once you know this is and this is how it'll look on the phone. Obviously, th these are the images we put in here, so this is why it looks like this. But if it, let's say it was a you know if it was a video production site or you know a juice site or you know those are the images you would see in here, and you can craft your own little mobile mobile version. There's a little piece of code you put where you host your website, and it, it redirects all the mobile traffic right to this little mini site up on the phone, and it's it's nice because you can add the calls to action and the contact form and the galleries and all kinds of cool stuff. Um, a menu if you have it, image slider, all this stuff, business hours. So you're yeah. building your own little mobile mobile version of the site and then basically done. Um, I'm not sure but um, you know this this tool was specifically built. Now the cool thing also about this company, you know, I I've built quite a few sites with this company, but they, uh, you know, you could build a site from scratch with this company. It doesn't have to be a mobile optimized website. You create an account. I already have an account here. I'll just show you real quick. Um, no account sign up. So where is it? Login. Here we go. Oh, I guess they're gonna make me put in my email password. And this will show you some of the sites I've made with the tool in the past. Um, but it's cool, you know, when this when this tool first launched, it was only to create mobile versions of your your website on, on the on the web. But now they've they've advanced the tool a little bit. Now you can create a, a completely what they call responsive website, which is looks the same on every device from a smartphone all the way up to a desktop. And it's it's a nice little site builder. It's 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 a really nice little site builder actually. So you, you create your, you know, you create, you choose your template, you customize the content, you publish, you're done. So literally, if you want to start a new site under any niche, you could use this site builder and, and basically have a site created in five or ten minutes. Then, of course, you have to 
add content to it, and then publish it, make a domain name point to it, and boom, you built a brand new site in 10 minutes. So th this is where it's it's gone to. This is this is how easy it is to create beautiful looking responsive websites that are great for mobile. So I'm not saying that everyone has to switch over to this, but just know that this this is out there and if you want to bring on new sites or have some new sites made for whatever other businesses or hobbies or whatever the case may be, you can use a tool like this and it takes care of all the design so you can just focus on publishing content and doing productive things like that instead of, you know, a lot of people, I always say this, um, a lot of people spend 90% of their time messing around with their website design and not enough time publishing content which brings in free traffic. So tools like this, WordPress is, is, is similar, you know, you put a nice theme up and you, you know, you're done. Um, customize the theme and you're ready to start publishing content and getting traffic. Um, so it's it's along those lines that's WordPress is more of a blogging platform this is more of just creating quick sites on the fly and they have blogs and stuff contained in here but it's um, I'd say it's a little more com commerce oriented this stuff um, and so but but I've seen people and I, I've used this this tool to build just general cool sites about hiking or gardening or skateboarding, whatever the case may be. So it's a it's a really cool tool that, that I wanted to share with everybody. Um, so yeah, so that's mobile. A little bit about mobile. Shall we move forward? We shall. Yeah, this is this is very much like what the, the tool will crank out for you. It'll crank out these um, you know, on the left, this is a website that's not mobile optimized. You look on your phone and you can't read anything. That's horrible. On the right, there's large buttons, calls to action, navigation buttons. This is a much more usable product on the phone. So therefore, it will it will get a much better response than not having that. So that's the whole point of that slide. Um, Okay. Um, the so second thing that we're looking at is just having a clean, clear, and concise website. So having something that just a simple design and something that just showcases really easily who you are, what you do, and how to connect with you. Just making it really easy. And you know, a lot of times people just have so much stuff going on in their, with their site makes it really confusing as to what they do. And you want you only have like three seconds to get people's attention to stay on your site and want to connect with you. So it's really important to make it very easy right away to know who you are and what your business well, is. Well, I, I, I always like to, to use Apple as, as the, the benchmark and clean, concise websites. I mean, you just take a look at the, the spacing you know the white space, the product, how how good it looks. Um, you know, very easy on the eyes. Most people, you know, this type of font, you know, this type of dark gray font on a white background is the most readable version. Um, you know, this this you know Apple has moved toward towards a this is a responsive website. This is this is is going to look the same on your phone as it looks right here. So if you if you want to see what good you know website spacing and stuff like that looks like you you know this is where to go to look around just look at Apple's website whether you're a fan of the company or not um, you can just see you know see how the products are laid out and the and the content I mean I don't even think they're doing you know a good as a job they they don't need to though you know they learn more if it was me, I would make this bigger, a larger call to action. But this is Apple, so who am I to critique mm -hmm. Apple? If you're not Apple, things need to stand out, probably a little bit more. Um, and yeah, it's um, it's an it's there's there's many other you know examples. Um, let me think of a good example of a clean layout. Something like something like eBay.
you know, as a straight up e-commerce play. Um, very clean, very, you know, very um, design wise, good spacing, excellent spacing. And yeah, they have a lot of stuff on here. This is, you know, but eBay sells, you know, millions of items, so it's hard to make it not scroll forever. But um, so let's look at PayPal. They're um, they're offshoot. They just split from eBay. Um, this is going to be another really clean design. Um, and this is this is what people, if it ever gets there, this is what people have grown have grown to expect. Mm -hmm. um, they they've grown to expect websites that look a certain way are very clean, very you know, statistics, testimonials. Um, it's not looking that fabulous, to be honest with you. Um, they I just redid like it. But a, I feel like this is like a common theme now, just like the scrolling down, just like you get on someone's home this, page. This, you're exactly right. This is exactly how most modern websites. Now, the question is whether a scrolling website, the old, the old, um, you know, standard for converting traffic was it shouldn't scroll for forever. Everything important needs to be up in this area. Um, but the, the industry has gone away from that a little bit because of the phone and, and mobile devices where people scroll more than they used to. And everything important still sh should still be above the fold. But you're seeing a lot of the, and this is a responsive website, It'll look exactly the same on the phone as it does right here, and that's where a lot, you know, that's where everything. Instagram, perfect example. Um, how it looks on the web right here, how it looks, how it looks on the phone, and then, Lord, you don't want to see my Instagram account. Um, <laughs> what, what will we see? Um, I'm not even going to go into it, to be honest with you. Uh, oh, there it is. Okay. Let's see. I'm sure you'll see a girl with tattoos. Let's see. Oh, oh no tattoos. Um, actually, oh, there's some nakedness. Um, oh, keep this clean. Okay, here's something more acceptable. Um, but but as you can see, this this website is a, is an emulation of their mobile app. So the trend right now is is a person's website is is an emulation of the mobile app. So what you're going to see on the web is what you're going to see. What you're going to see on your on the app is what you'll see basically on a website on the uh, desktop when it when you look at the larger version. So that's where the, the industry is heading, which is very clean and concise. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have a lot of clutter. Uh, let's see. And then, you yeah, making sure, making sure that you're using the language that speaks to your target market. I mean, a lot of times when when I was working with, when I, when I first was doing websites and realizing that people wanted to write their own content, you know, a lot of times, just like when you describe what you do, a lot of times you're not really speaking to your customer, you're speaking to yourself. So you think it makes so much sense, but to your customer, it really doesn't. So you know, people are getting a lot more used to very friendly, casual language in business. I mean, it obviously depends on the kind of business that you're in, but you know, making sure that you're you're picking out phrases and quite and and putting questions on your site that that mean something to your target market. So just kind of going back a couple of weeks when we talked about creating your customer profile and and kind of that storytelling component of your business, making sure that you're you have that person in mind when you're writing the copy and throughout your entire site. So whether you're writing on for your homepage or other pages within your site or even with your blogs, um, just making sure that you're speaking to your customer so that it entices them to take action and obviously want to continue to read on to what you have to say. Well, a lot of companies make the mistake where they speak at the customer yeah. instead of to the customer. So they're like, okay, you need to do this and you need to do that, and this is what my product's going to do for you. Instead of, um, you know, there's a study that 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 compared something like um, find your insurance plan versus find my insurance plan, 
and find my insurance plan converted about 40% better than find your insurance plan. So you can see one, one word difference that makes it seem more personal to the user. That, that's, that's a perfect example of, of that concept right there. Uh, but every piece of content on your website can be analyzed and scrutinized and, and also split tested. You know, you, there's programs out there you can plug into your website where you can take your headline, for, for instance. Let's say it's, um, you know, the best flower shop in Fort Lauderdale. And you can split test the statement that, you know, it's called the headline with um, save up to 40% on your flower order. Or this week only, get your get a special deal. So there's, there's actually softwares you can plug into your website that will allow you to do A-B testing on the different statements on your website and then measure which lead to the most inquiries or sales. So it's really cool, um, cool type stuff that you can, different softwares you can, and what's happened over the last, I'd say, five years is that there's all these little companies have sprung up. I'll show you another one, um, Olark. This is a chat widget. So um, what happens is, well, I'll show you on on my website. Let me, um, this is this is an example of, of a widget you can plug into your website. Um, if you have WordPress, a lot of times they have a plugin. Otherwise, they give you a piece of code that you drop into the layout. You have your your web guy drop the code into the layout. If you're on Shopify, it's a one-click app install. So you know, any way you slice it, there's a way to implement it into whatever type of website it is. Usually, I would say 95% of the time. Um, if I can get my website to come up, I'll show you a couple of widgets. There we go. Oh, by the way, website load time is hugely important. <laughs> um, my website usually loads a lot quicker than that, but how fast your website loads, and there's tools that actually measure website load speed. It should be under five seconds. If your website takes longer than five seconds to load, you're losing like 30% of your visitors just because they don't have the patience. So, you know, this this is <laughs> this is an example of pop-ups, calls to action, things of that nature. We're going to get into pop-ups in a second, but. Um, you know, they can sign up for my newsletter for my free tips. They can contact me right now over here on this with this little widget. So they don't want to do that. They can schedule a consulting appointment with me or a free uh, evaluation to see if we're the right agency for them, that type of thing. Um, so, these, you know, they can call. These, these are floating widgets right here. These, and this is something any website could have embedded into the site layout. They can send me money if they owed it to me. They can send me a they can leave a, a message, leave their contact details. So you know, along with most companies, don't have three widgets like that. I'm a little bit of a eccentric type. Um, you know, I'm a little nuts with these widgets because I believe me. When every time I add a widget to my website, my inquiries go up a little bit more. The percentage. So. I think I'm pretty much capped out right now, but you never know. There might be something that comes along that I might want to add. So, you know, I have a call to action here. This is another call to action to contact widget. Scroll down, free evaluation, click here, send us an email. I probably have seven or eight, you know, calls to action on my homepage. So that's the kind of, here's call, call this phone number. There's another one, no, it's nine. So having a lot, I'm not saying everyone should have nine calls to action on their website, but it should definitely be more than three. So uh, when we get into some anal you know, website analysis, we can, uh, we can count them up and see where everyone stands with their calls to action. Um, so let's see what we got next. Yeah, branding branding's super important. You, you want to, one thing about branding, you want to make yourself seem bigger than you are, always, always. For all they know, you could be a $100 million a year company, okay? 
and and the, your website needs to portray that in your 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 copy, right, Kate? Because pe people people want to do business with people that they perceive to be successful and doing it well and having a lot of good um, you know good uh, credibility built up, whether it's testimonials or and have a really good story like the uh, previous session. Yeah, I, you're, yeah, you're you're, you're, the story needs to be consistent and just everything being really consistent. You know, when you're going to someone's Facebook, to, to Twitter, to their YouTube channel, to their website, everything needs to be very clear, like concise, and and your brand just needs to be the same throughout. And definitely, right. you want to make sure that you know that that people know and trust that they're going to get good service from you, that they're going to want to interact with you, and so like with some of these tools like the live chat and everything, it just makes you seem like, um, you know, even if you are a one man show, um, you can showcase. You know, the, the other thing about the chat and things, and actually I took, I had a live chat widget on here. I took it off <laughs> because I had so many of these things. Um, I decided to, to run with this one, um, in lieu of a live chat for the moment, just to see how it worked. And that's a nice thing. You can take them off, put them back on, or just deactivate them, reactivate them. Um, so as far as, um, well, there's a point I was going to make. Um, oh, and well, one, thing sure. too, one thing that I really think is interesting and, and what I've been learning from just kind of working with a lot of different industries and companies. It depends. I mean, it, it, it depends on the kind of industry and business that you're in, you know, the, based on some of the small local mom and pop shops, like certain things work really well for like an e-commerce versus, you know, the local mom and pop stores. So there's a lot. Of, and when you are that local business, I think there are some things that you can do just to um, kind of create more of that rapport and like showcasing that you're local. You're not you know, an Apple or an eBay, you are that local person and you're trying like, so if you're not trying to build some big e-commerce site and you're selling your marketing service down the street and you're trying to build a local business, your, your goals are going to be a lot different than if you're trying to drive hundreds of thousands of people to your website. That's a very good point. Um, different types of businesses need, need a different emphasis and a different tone and, and, you know, at the end of the day, people want professionalism. They want competency. They want great service. They want, you know, great customer service. You know, those are the things that permeate all types of businesses. Depending on your niche and your and your type of business, your website content is going to ebb and flow a little bit with who your target market is and who you really are. But but I do think, um, you know, listen, if you have testimonials, feature them. Yeah. If you have happy customers. Use that. You know, go back into your emails. I've done this in the past. Go back into your previous emails and see if you can collect out any previous, oh, you guys did a great job. I loved it. Blah, blah, blah. And turn that into a testimonial. Or And, and also ask them to do a review, an online review. Um, because online reviews on Yelp and Google and Facebook are, are extremely important to convincing other people to do business with you. Right, Kate? That is right. And a good point. Okay, like Evan was talking about with the calls to action, making sure you have a strong call to action on your website or multiple. Um, but just, ha I mean, having one that's compelling is important because I think that everyone kind of is now saying, oh, have a call, have a call to action. And so everybody just kind of started getting up sign up for my newsletter or something that's really kind of boring and it doesn't really entice people. So you have to come up with at least that one thing that's going to be compelling enough for somebody to, to want to connect with you. And even if it just is, even if you don't have, you know, a white paper or a, a report or checklist or whatever that looks like, something that's going to get them excited to sign up for your, what, even if it is a newsletter, not calling it a newsletter. So um, well, you know, when people come to a website, they the, the key one of the keys is to make your site what's called stickier, where where there's many things to do and interact with. And we've talked a lot about that type of stuff. When you talk about collecting people's data, the primary objective of your website visitors is to collect their data. Okay, 
through an email opt-in, liking you on Facebook, following you on Twitter, following you on Instagram, what um, opting into your white paper, the list goes on and on, signing up for your 10% off coupon. You know, the, the goal of any website should be to capture their data, okay? Because once you do that, then you can drip market to them. You can put them into an automated, what they call marketing automation platform, like AWeber or GetDrip is an also nice one. Um, there's Infusionsoft is a common one that's used pretty pervasively out there. And, and so wherever possible, there, there should be you know, opportunities to leave their information with you. And you, you have to proactively solicit it from them. Um, which is probably a really nice, um, and these are all nice ways, free consultation, you know, sign up for our newsletter, but, but I never think signing up for our newsletter is quite enough. It should be sign up for special deals yeah. or sign up and get 10% off your first order. That's a very common, um, you know, you can give someone 10% off or 20, whatever the case may be, to get them in the door, you know, to get them experience, you know, to, to gain that company experience with you in that relationship, it's worth giving away a little bit of percentage in order to start bonding with them and turn them into a lifetime customer. Um, I was just reading about the, just the conversion rate on, on, on these calls to action. And now, because there's just so much information overload, like eBooks used to be the big thing. And now a lot of people aren't even setting up for ebooks because they read the they read ebook and they think it's just going to be this long book and no one wants to read like long things anymore. So those right. one sheeter things like checklists do really well or like a one sheeter of um I know in marketing like I'm always downloading you know like the top three tools to to create great videos you know things that you whatever knowledge you know that you can put into just like a one little page something that like one little PDF that someone um, that that someone can print out those get a lot higher conversions than signing up for a newsletter or even those ebooks now again ebook it just in in psychologically in people's minds they just think it's gonna be a lot to read so people are loving and checklists do really well too right. well, well listen anything where they hear a book they're running the other direction yeah because they think that's a lot of work but you can you can give them um, you know, a white paper or a one a one page or like like Kate says, is is you know those are still those are very big in, in lead generation and getting people interested into the into the sales process. Um, if you don't have like a real hardcore sales process going on, you're probably not going to be giving out a lot of ebooks or white papers. But you can give out coupon codes. You can give out you know sign up for for special you know our special newsletter once you know our insider newsletter they might they might sign up for that and it's just it's just a trial and error thing if you if you launch one thing and no one's signing up at 10% off kick it up to 20 25 see if that increases the opt-in rate and play play around with it never leave it static all you always have to be trying new things and changing it up and seeing which works better with your website your website can never be a static entity. It always it should be dynamic in a multitude of ways. But it's specifically regarding collecting people's information, you can try little things like that. Pop up boxes. We're going to get into pop up boxes. And, no, um, and I just want to say, yeah. like, think when you're thinking about what your what that that giveaway is. Think about your audience. So who are you talking to every day, and what are they looking for? So like. With Erica, she's you know she's selling um, the those the clothing line and some shoes and and accessories and things. So maybe you know you have like a the top five things every woman needs in her closet. You know, every, every people are always like, oh, what are the like what are those those signature pieces that you need? Um, if you're like um, like Juice Buzz, that like in a way like the four juice shots that are going to make you feel you know, like, like a million bucks or, or not get you sick or, you know, whatever those things are that you keep hearing from that you keep yeah. talking about with your clients. Those are the kinds of things that you pull from. Don't just like 
sit down and look at your computer and think, oh my gosh, what can I come up with? You know, you're talking to your clients and your customers every day and that you should be using that to create what are those free things that you're giving away. True, and also that you can use um, feedback like that from customers to create a larger FAQ section, frequently asked questions. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, a lot of companies don't have enough of a of, of a frequently asked question section. But it not only not only can it alleviate some customer service issues because they'll find their answer, they won't have to call you and ask you. But it can um, it also adds SEO value and content to the website. So if you have a nice long FAQs page with a whole bunch of great customer Q, you know, questions and answers you've had over the past couple of years, that can actually bring you traffic to your website, free traffic to your website. So, you know, and even with like a live chat widget, if if someone asks asks you a question on your website, you can you can turn that question and answer into a blog post where the question is the title and the answer is the is the the body. Of the post and publish that, and it just it just creates another post on your website. That's just a little a little trick, a little strategy there to turn. You know, obviously you can't. You have to remove names and you have to you know not put anyone's personal information in there. But you can turn people's email inquiries or live chat inquiries into FAQs for your website just to build out more content. Um, so this this right here um, this this is an example of a very simplified and AppSumo has one I saw um, one of the examples one of the site examples was running um, the AppSumo what was it was it here was it Tiff yeah the Living Well Coach so so she's running this AppSumo plugin uh, or Sumo Me actually same company I think right yeah it is or maybe, yeah. Um, so this is a really cool little thing they just released. I love where, that. Yeah, it just puts it on the top of your website, basically. It literally just takes your website and puts a nice opt-in form at the top and says, this is a brilliant idea. This is this should, if the content is phrased right, and obviously you can work on it to make it work better over time, this is a brilliant way to collect data on your visitors um, and if they're like, no thanks, it just goes away and you see the website. So there you go. So already we, we one of the people in the, in the master class is using one of our strategies. So fantastic, amazing. Um, but this, so this is sort of along the same lines. It's a, it's a very um, concise, it's got a big headline here and it's got a um, one call to action here. That should even probably be a little bigger, the sign-up free, um, these call to action buttons. But this is where this is also where the industry is heading, where you're just driving people to do one thing. Okay. They can't do anything else. They come there, they sign up free, or see the menu, and so you've gotten them into the process. And they're not being distracted by a million other things going on on your website. And that's very, very effective website stuff. Shall we move forward? Um, we we sort of already talked about pop-ups, right, Kate? I mean, mm -hmm. these are these are some you know these are the annoying pop-ups that you know people see when they go to people's websites, but they're so effective it's it overrides any amount of obnoxiousness that you could possibly think it, it contains. Um, one of my clients, I, I actually made the suggestion, although they they never gave me credit for it, but that happens. Um, I told them to launch a pop-up on their site, and they their email acquisition increased by 500 times over just the customers coming through buying off the website. They launched an initial pop-up right when the site visitor got there, boom, right in the middle of the screen, save 10% 10, 10 on your initial order when you buy from such and such, our website, and their email acquisition increased 500% over, and, and granted, they're the other emails they're acquiring were people buying, so which they may only convert five percent of their visitors into customers. So it's a little misleading to say how big of you know how huge it was of an increase it was. Nonetheless, it was five hundred percent more emails they're collecting 
So therefore, you can remarket to those people through email and send them coupons and get them to buy more stuff, which is why pop-ups are so important. I um, I put a little list here. Um, here's some here's some pop-ups from around the web. This is one you see on a lot on a lot of uh, instant access, gain instant access, free download. This is kind of like a uh, get info type of thing. You know, subscribe to our newsletter thing, sign up for our emails. Um, let's see if there's a discount one. Here's one with it's in another language, so I'll breeze by that one. Um, and there's, you know, a pop-up can take so many. This is this is a common, commonly used one out there. This is a perfect, you know, ebook type of opt-in, free blueprint, you know. So here's here's a nice one. Here's an e-com one, e-commerce one. Um, join us, enter your email. So these these are pop-ups that people are being hit with. Here's one. Is this, yeah, bonobos, twenty percent off bonobos. Enter your email address, get code. This is very popular in e-commerce. All the biggest companies do this, and they do it because it ramps up their email acquisition, and because email is actually the biggest driver of sales in e-commerce. So it's imperative if you sell anything online that you are getting people to opt in with a thing like this. And I think we've, you know, beaten beaten a dead horse adequately with, with the pop-up thing. But they are very, very important. Here's one. Here's a nice one. Um, boom. That's Mar Mar Marie Fernello, Mario. right? Oh, I love her. Exactly. I never remember her name. But what a beautiful pop up that is. It's gorgeous. I'm sure it works well. Um, but these things can always improve, and they're never good enough. So you have to keep evolving them and making them better. Um, okay, so. Moving right, whoops, moving right along. Okay. Oh, yes. Um, adding, yeah, adding all the stuff. I mean, obviously, everybody's now, you want to get people to your website, and you absolutely want to capture their email information, um, but also making sure that they know how to connect with you on social media, since that's becoming extremely important. So um, have, adding those buttons. They're, it's really easy to add to your site now, especially if you have a WordPress site. Um, it's just mm -hmm. easy to use different widgets um, and adding those social media sites. The one thing I always tell people w w in doing this too is, and we're going to go in a lot more obviously in the next couple of weeks uh, on social media and, uh, and how to build a following. Um, but, but you don't have to have every, every widget, like don't be putting Twitter and Instagram on your website. If you're not even on those platforms, you know, pick the ones that you're, consistent with that you have content on and that you're actually building that community and make sure those are featured on your website. I still go to a lot of people's, especially the small business owner, I go to their site and you click on their Twitter button or their, you know, their YouTube channel and they just have nothing going on. So you really don't want to drive somebody to a place that you're not really active. So just be sure that whatever you're putting on your site, it's, it's consistent and you're actually keeping up to date with all the content. That's a good point. Um, it, it, don't don't advertise social networks that aren't appropriate to the business. But if they are, then you need to just be getting your behind over there and posting on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, wherever it may be. If people are following you, so this this is this is add this. This is um, a really cool plugin for WordPress or any other site. Um, the, these are what are called follow links. Um, this will actually, let me just make sure I'm not misrepresenting something. Um, yeah, so this is, so this allows people to just share on their Facebook really easily from your, it, it's a floating widget, see it just kind of sits there. But if these, these down here, see there's, there were called sharing widgets, which share the page content, and then there's, there's follow widgets, which are follow my company. So there's there's two different things. There's sharing the page, tweeting it, liking it, pin, pinning it. 
Then there's follow our company on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram. So you, you, you need both of those going on. And this, this tool is amazing. For 10 bucks a month, you get all these different types. They, these are mobile sharing widgets. When, you're, when your website, you pop up your website um, on a mobile device, it, it adds these little follower company icons right to the bottom of the website automatically. That's, that's pretty fab. Um, you know, you have to get into this and dig in and see what, what you think is, you know, follow, share. You know, so and this is for mobile. So since everything is going towards mobile, these are some widgets that you definitely want to be running on your website, just so you can capitalize on your traffic more effectively and get people sharing it and like and following your company pages. So there's other ones. There's another one called Share This. I, I re I'm really impressed with what Add This has done. They have free free tools. Um, Let's see. This one, this one's pro, can, pro, pro. We can actually put together. There's, you know, there's so many tools and things that you can use to, for for all this stuff that we're talking about. So we can actually put together like a fun little sheet and send out to you guys just so you have it. And um, absolutely, all these all these tools are, we're going over right now. We'll make a list of them and then you can check them out at your leisure and ask any questions. There's always so many more that come out. It's just crazy. Um. The next yeah, thing is well, well, listen, that's that's what's exciting about modern day web web you know web design and web uh, web commerce is all these wonderful tools. Back in the day, back even five ten you know five years definitely ten years ago, you know these these tools didn't exist. Yeah. And so websites were very, very much a two dimensional place with not a lot of interaction going on, and that and people they came and they left, and they you know ninety nine percent of people didn't buy from you. Or inquire. So now there's many things that can help squash that problem, or at least, you know, drastically minimize it. So, yep. And then obviously, the keeping your content fresh is is really important. Just like with your social media sites, your website is the same. And Evan talked about it. Just making sure that you're changing things and testing things and seeing what's working and what's not. Um, if you have new uh, new products or you're featuring new things you have new packages um you're getting testimonials just being consi like just consistently updating your site so that it entices people to to go on there more and and see new things that you have going on and happening and it's also just good for SEO purposes you know and just especially if you do come up with those new products and services um just continually blogging, you know, blogging about the different stuff that you have going on, whether you have, um, whether you're sharing really good information and content or you're updating some things that you have going on within your company, keeping things fresh well, and relevant. Right. Well, you know, like I, I hate to keep using my own website as an example, but I seem to be following in line with a lot of these suggestions. Um, but recently, I I um I call it re-optimizing, which means adding additional content. Some of the content on this page right here, you know, this 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 statement, for example, this didn't say this. It said something like, um, you know, let us be your digital agency. But I was, you know, scrutinizing it. I'm like, well, let me let me let me change it around. Let me let me make it award-winning digital marketing agency, and. You know, I added some more keywords that pertain to what my agency does, and built out some more of some of this content. The, the the point I'm trying to make is that whatever content is on your 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 homepage, primarily is what your homepage is going to rank for in the, in the search results in Google, Bing, and Yahoo. So if you have a decent amount of content on your website, and it's it, you may want to add add a little bit to it. So, you know, my goal is to rank in Google under this phrase right here. So, I changed it a couple weeks ago. I really don't expect it to rank very high, but you never know. So, I would go here. I would go and check and see if, if that phrase is, is helping my website gain some rankings. No, I don't see it has, but I'm not going to, you know, look through 100 results. Well, there's one of my ads right there. Um, but it's not my page organically ranking. See, that's the thing. You can you can buy ads so your website comes up under certain phrases, and then you should also be optimizing the content on the pages of your site to to rank in the free traffic. And those are two separate 
separate interrelated strategies, SEO and then SEM, which is search engine management or search engine marketing. Um, so, and, and yes, you should have you should you should have an active blog on your website. It adds more content over time. Over time, I tell people this. I've probably been telling people this more longer than anything is is just have a site that grows outward. Your your website should never have five or ten pages. It should have five thousand pages ultimately, because each page will be about something different that could get a ranking in the search results and bring free traffic to your website. So whenever you think of your website, think of something that is growing outward over time. And that's why using something like WordPress, a blogging platform to run your site on, or another type of platform with, with blogging features is a good idea so you can grow your site outward quicker and rank under more stuff. And we'll time. talk more about what that means in the next couple of weeks when we're talking about social and blogging and we'll get we'll get in more about that and and video stuff so let's keep going because I want to get to the I want to get to your guys site yes. yes I agree okay let's let's keep going um, well let me just say one quick thing when you add new content to your website you should share it if you create a new page tweet it Facebook it share it on LinkedIn create content and share create content and share and you'll get more traffic and then, to, and then this is this is something that a lot a lot of people forget. I still forget how many people don't use Google Analytics or they don't analyze. They don't really have a way to measure if their website is successful. So they go back to, well, everyone says I have a really great looking site. Well, that doesn't really matter. You have to set goals for your site and then figure out what you're measuring every month. So deciding what you need to measure, first of all, everybody should have Google Analytics on your site so that you can start to measure who is coming to your site, where are they coming from? You know, you need to decide, hey, I'm, I'm looking on Google, on Google Analytics. I'm seeing that most of my traffic is coming from Facebook. So now you know that you have clients and customers on Facebook. So now you should be doing some Facebook ads or spending a lot more time there. Um, so just having goals set in place and then always looking and seeing where your customers are coming from. And also, are they staying on your, on your site? You know, it's, analytics is great. I mean, they show you everything from how long they're staying, where they're going. You might find that you have an article that you wrote that you might not even think is the best article, but it's getting a ton of traffic or people are on that page or they're, you know, signing up for your newsletter that way. So Figuring out what to analyze is really important and then actually having goals for that so that you know what you should be doing. So if you want to increase your website visitors, you go back to like what, what Evan was just saying, which is share, share more content on social media and, and try to drive more visitors. So figuring out what you need to be measuring and then setting a goal for each is, is extremely important and it's something that most people are not focused on. Right. Well, the other th the other side to that is also how are you measuring the effectiveness of your online advertising or your website in general? Because you know there's so many ways to drive traffic to your website and pay to do so: Google AdWords, Bing Ads, Facebook Ads. You can even advertise on Twitter. You can advertise to people that have already visited your website after they leave. However, you, you know you could spend thousands of dollars driving traffic to your website whatever it is but if you're not measuring the effectiveness of those campaigns you're always going to be wondering if they're working or not mm -hmm. and it's it's really hard to realize all of the you know how many times people are searching for juice bar in Boca Raton or you know video production in Delray you know or an agency in Fort Lauderdale if you don't have a way to measure which source of the traffic, let's say from Google, landed on the site and then inquired, okay, how did you hear about us? Oh, you heard about us on Google. You could have a drop-down menu with the different choices. And there's, there's other electronic ways. You can assign specific phone numbers through something like, a, like Call Source is a company where you can assign a, a certain phone number to, to each advertising platform and then say, okay, Google brought in 10 calls. Bing brought in five, Facebook brought in three, and then, then you can start 
quantifying how well the advertising is working or not or not um, the, the ultimate goal is to track it all the way through to the purchase however if you're not transacting online it's a little harder but if you're capturing leads online or contact inquiries you know contact form submissions then you can with that drop down you can also assign coupon codes to you know Google 10 mention Google 10 and save 10 percent off mention Facebook 20 and save 20 percent off then when someone comes into the store or calls you up and says oh I saw this special promotion on Facebook oh chalk one up for Facebook you know it brought in five this month this week and I only spent a hundred dollars I made a thousand crank it up so these these little strategies for measuring the effectiveness are going to let you make those decisions determinations whether you're spending enough or not enough so before you you know crank up the faucet so to speak you have to iron out how am I actually going to measure these different campaigns effectiveness right okay yes uh, that's why it's so, so yes. good to have like a I mean that's why it's so great to have a marketing person or someone that you know is is excited about your marketing because it's you have to have like a someone that gets excited about this kind of stuff. It's almost like it's like a game to like how can you get more visitors and what's working and what's not and doing more of what's working and, and getting rid of the stuff that isn't. It just makes it so much easier to know where you should be spending your time and where you should be marketing instead of just like, I have a website, I hope it's working or, you know, it just makes when you have someone that's well, consistently uh, uh, looking at the know, numbers. Technically, technically speaking, advertising online is the way to figure out those things to yeah. the T. I spent X and I got Y. Yep. So it's either working well, it's not working well enough, let me increase it because it is or bring it down because it's not. And you can do that on the keyword phrase level in Google and Bing and Yahoo. Um, on Facebook, it's a little bit different. We, we can talk about that, you know, at length another time. But there are ways of measuring most types of online advertising, and and that's why it's so thrilling. Is because you you it's not just okay. I'm buying a billboard on you on uh, on I ninety five for three thousand dollars a month. Um, I think it brought in twenty calls. You know, you know grant, granted, it's similar because you can put a specific phone number and measure how many calls came in and see how many of those calls resulted in customers. The same thing in Google, the same thing in, in Bing, same thing on Facebook. They're just other you know, avenues for measuring campaign mm -hmm. effectiveness and seeing if it's working well, well enough or not, or not. Okay. Yay, review. So. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like asking, okay. can you, I want to know how to change my site, what do I need to do? And what's great is that okay. while we go through some of your websites, you'll, 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 you'll see there's a consistent kind of theme with with what everyone's site could be adding or making a little bit better so you can kind of take other people's feedback and, and use it on your own stuff but correct um, well this you know reviewing websites is something that I'd like to think I am qualified to do I've been doing it for well over 10 years people hire me to do this I do it out of the kindness of my heart in certain instances so it's just something kind of like back of my you know hand kind of stuff so you know this I really like this plugin up here that um, so this is a living well coach and you know this is this is smart this is um, this is a nice little sticky subscribe and this was the website that had the the uh, the pop down um, let's see if it'll pop back down no no it didn't it went to um, what tab? This is the site that had the, had the initial page that asked for the opt-in, and then we so we closed it out. So if I if I really had to, um, and no one please take anything I say personally. Um, I I do this for a living, and people are usually really really receptive to it. Um, but you know, not every uh, business owner is the same. Um, I generally like this website. Um, you know, when you get into things like white text on a dark background like this, you could run into a little bit of readability issues. 
Um, so th that's one thing I would say about that. You know, these these links up here aren't readable. These links probably need to be, you know, white and bold. So they, unless they were just purely done for for some kind of SEO purposes, so people really don't see them, which which I don't recommend. Um, but yeah, it looks like that, that could be why that was done. Um, you know, phone number larger. The phone number should be about five times larger than this in the header. Call now. We'd love to hear from you. That type of thing. So that would be a call to action. Um, let me just make sure I'm on the home page. I don't want to not be on the home page. Yeah. So, you know, th these these are, you know, this this picture right here. I, I would probably. Um, I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of of multiple images, um, depending on what they are. I think these are fine though, but studies have shown that the more the more images you have in the main image area, the less people will. They actually resonate with the first one like 80% of the time, they're, they're going to click on whatever's in the first image. But they're, this isn't taking up a lot of room, so I don't think it's that big of an issue. So these, you know, these would be considered calls to action right here. So she's got some nice calls to action, and she's got her social icons here. Um, sure, sure, I like them. i probably go with a little bit of a bigger social icon, just so they stand out a bit more. Um, you know, a quote, sure, that, a quote could be nice, but you know what I'd rather see instead of a quote right here? I'd rather see some customer testimonials in this area. Um, the quote, the, the, the testimonials need to be up higher. You can move the quote down. The testimonials, and, and, and not all of the testimonials, but maybe like three. So you take the testimonials and you move them up into this area and maybe you just push this down. Um, this this stuff down here isn't you know doing a ton for you you know usability wise, but it's still another opt in and it's some music that they can play. But that that could be you know further towards the bottom. The testimonial should be higher. Um, let's see. You know, uh, let me go into let's see how the about me looks. Um, great. I'd make this picture bigger because um, I think it's it's cute and it's it's not big enough. Um, and and you really have to you really have to be careful with the white text on this type of black back um, dark background just because it's not that readable. Not that it's not readable, it's just not as readable as. So what's happening here is there's a lot of color with white text on it and. Studies have shown that that's not as readable as a white background with dark gray text. So you have to watch. Uh, and what happens with a lot of websites is is people get caught up in the aesthetics of it all and and the uh, artistic elements of it all. But I'm here to tell you that artistic elements don't convert people into customers. Um, they look pretty. That's about it. So you have to take that into consideration. Um, but yeah, the about page is, is very, very important. So you have to, yeah, but again, is it readable? W what I like, I'd really like to see here is a video, you know, a video from Tiffany that said, you know, hi, I'm Tiffany, welcome to my website. Um, and then you can have all this content underneath it, but you could have a nice message from Tiffany. And, and I think that would go a long way no one's going to read all this content. That's the problem. People don't read anymore. They're so conditioned to watch videos. It's it's ridiculous. Um, let's take a quick look into the store. Let's see what we have going on here. Um, okay, so Let's see what kind of shopping cart we got going on here. Um, okay, not not being set up. Um, well, I like the concept. You have to you have to wonder whether the store is um, you know the right store. They shouldn't have to click around too much before purchasing. So you have to watch that. So that's some, that's a little bit of feedback for the. Let's move right along. Okay, all right, Kate. Yep. 
to Elena. And this is the video production site, correct? Yes. Um, little issue up here with the webmaster verification code um, is showing up. Okay. Um, so something went wrong here when the, when this uh, piece of code was added to the site. It was it goes between the head and the head tag, but it may have gone outside the head tag. So that may be why that's showing up like that. Um, <laughs> let's see. You know, I, I'm I'm not a big fan of a of a black background. That's you know most studies show that a white clean background is the way to go. What happens a lot of times is people they choose a template and they just run with the template. So the template then becomes the basis of the website. So I would swap out the template personally. Um, and even the, the one thing that I and I, I think I, I said this to Dimitri the first time I was on to say because I know his company name has a mean, like is is meaningful to him. Um, with the name, but when you get on the homepage, it's not like bam in your face, like this is what we do. So it looks really, it looks cool. But like even in the, that middle, I think it would be cool to just have, you know, like video production and then clicking on those buttons would make more sense to the person that's there. Okay, there we go. The site, the site loaded, but you have to, you have to wonder, you know, I feel like this template has, it might have some coding issues. Um, that's not, at least in Firefox, it's not letting me move around. Like I can't click on anything. It's it seems like it's dragging a little bit. So there could be issues there. Um, but that that could be remedied with a new just by swapping out the template if if it's a WordPress site. If it's not, then then no. But um, okay, let's move on to Billux Fashion. I like it. I like it in in concept. You know, I'm I'm tough because I I don't like dark websites personally. Um, just having done the e-commerce thing for a long time, websites are typically not dark background that do e-commerce. Um, so that has to be considered. Um, people people are conditioned to buy from white background websites like Amazon, like eBay, you know, most of the bigger commerce sites, and I understand it's a fashion thing, so it needs to look a little prettier, but um, personally, I would probably recommend a new template for this website. Um, it doesn't look like it's um, mobile optimized, but, but I could be wrong. Um, so let's let's just so let's look at some cost action. Um, see more, okay. Um, shop now, shop now. Um, again, the dark background and the white text, not very readable. But this is a common design issue. A lot of companies do this. Um, this this could be updated down here, and 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 I wouldn't I wouldn't link to who designed it personally in the footer. You know what I mean? Why? No one needs to know who designed your website. I assure you. And if they insist upon it, you should you should run the other direction. Um, so let's let's look in here, real, just real quick. This looks cool. Um, yeah. Listen, product photo very very important. Um, these these look good. Sure. Now the one thing I would I would just say about this one is that it doesn't have any trust logos. So a trust logo is something like a um, an SSL certificate, a, a Norton's Trust Seal, a BBB logo, the National Institute of you know Fashion Retailers. I'm not even sure if that's an actual you know association, but these are the types of logos people want to see on a website to make them feel warm and fuzzy about sticking their credit card into your website. Otherwise, they won't. Yeah, especially because um, it looks like her price point's pretty high. So with some of the... 
Right, and so and so when you go into the cart, let's just see, let's just double check and see when it becomes a secure. I mean, I add it to cart. You know, the problem I see this problem a lot. You've added to cart, but then you should get some kind of pop up, check out, or continue shopping. Otherwise, they may never see that cart two up there. So okay, so I've got I've got it in my cart. Check out. And hopefully this turns into a secure page. Yeah. Okay, so it's some PayPal. Um, they have to be careful because, you know, this this right here should say the company name and not a Gmail address. Mm -hmm. That could lend some, some lack of credibility. People look for any little thing to run the other direction, I assure you. And to underline Kate's point, when people come and there's the, the, their higher price points, this, this site is perfect for a live chat widget. You should have a little widget at the bottom that says, hi, how can we help you? So people can ask questions about the products and you can interact with your site visitors a little bit, especially when you have higher priced items. They, want, they may want to ask some questions. Um, okay. And I know, so guys, thank you so much. You are, um, we're, we've kind of gone a little bit longer. So I definitely want you to check out A Friendly Divorce because I told Eleanor she actually asked oh, in the Facebook group. Okay. So go to Let's a friendly divorce. Let's do, Let's do it. Okay, the first thing when, when when I look at this website is I feel like I'm in outer space. Okay. Why? You know, there's we're not sailing to to, to Pluto right now. We are getting divorced. So I have I have a lot of problem with that background. It just it just doesn't go with the site. So um and I, I can probably tell why it was done because the interior is white, so the exterior is a, you know it's a background that it, it's got some aesthetic appeal. It just doesn't really make sense on a divorce website. Um, you know I, I was looking at this site earlier, and you know the problem I see immediately: no calls to action. Okay, now these these can be clicked on, but people may not not know to click on these. And it, and it I saw it earlier. So I'm not quite sure why it's not right now, but um, let's look at the optimization. So I would I would put a link right here, probably under the map. You know, find my mediator. Click here to find my a mediator. Click here, and then it'll take you to the mediators page, where you know, see it's it's here, but it's not. It doesn't look like a button. It's it's a button when you hover hover over it, but it doesn't look like a button. It's not a call to action button. I would put a button right here under the map. Find a mediator, a nice button right here. Um, blog posts on the homepage, sure. I don't I don't have a real big problem with that. Um, that that's good for SEO actually. These pages should rank well. And the, speaking of blog posts, these titles may be able to be re-optimized to be um, a little bit more explanative, uh, I guess you could say, divorce baggage. You just have to ask yourself, is anyone Googling divorce baggage? Um, maybe they are. Maybe they are. Um, so you want your titles, your blog posts and things to be, to coordinate to what to popular search phrases a lot of times. Um, now, this I like the video. I'm a little, I'm a little, you know, uneasy with the uh, spacing, spacing through here. And this, this headline, I understand there's two columns here, but usually a headline extends across the top, so you may be able to, hopefully, push the video down a little bit, make the headline go across the top, and it would even out the spacing a little bit. The um, font is so small. The yeah. The font is really small here. This is a little smaller than what what is recommended, um, but the, the, you know more content could be added here, or probably what I would add here is like a Facebook a Facebook fan widget. Um, you can put a little widget right here that allows them to like the Facebook page right from the widget. So I would probably drop because you have some space here. So um, assuming this this doesn't drop down. You could, you know, fill up this right column with some more 
things, you know, leave your email, follow us on Facebook, that type of thing, and, and bring some uh, content to the, just to even out the two columns. So I think that uh, that would go a long way. But, you know, I, I, if I had to be critical, um, I, I would personally, I, I don't, you know, the logo in the middle like this, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's, um, it just doesn't smack of professionalism to me, to me. Granted, I'm not looking to get a divorce, so I'm not the target market, but um, I feel like it needs, it probably needs a, a, re, a refurb, a refurbishment. Um, make the logo a little smaller, move it over to the left, just so you can use the header a little bit, a little. Or if you're going to leave it like this, I would drop a toll-free number right under here, under divorce mediation and document preparation. Call toll-free such and such, and then you can connect them with who, whichever mediator in their area or wherever you need to direct them. But that is a that would be a nice place to if you're going to do it like this. That would be a nice place to feature the phone number if you can fit it in there. Um, so yeah, yeah. Listen, there's there's tweaking a current site, which which is done, and then there's re for you know redesigning the whole doggone thing. So at some point you have to ask yourself if that is the direction I want to go or not, or I need to go. And, and really, the way to figure that out is you know send some traffic to this website. Um, and see how many inquiries you get, you know, or look at your analytics. See, okay, we got, you know, a thousand visitors last month. How many, how many referrals were created to the mediators? Was it 30 or was it 100, you know? And so there's going to be a, and, and that's going to help guide you as to whether or not this website in its current you know, incarnation is is good enough for what you're doing. Um, so and we'll talk, and we can we can talk further too, because I want to bring you in. Eleanor is trying to do some interesting things, so we can have a sidebar conversation with her um, afterwards. But I know you guys have been so awesome, and I know that we're that we've kind of gone over a little bit in time. Um, so Evan, thank you so much. Evan, as you My as pleasure. you can hear, Evan has a ton of knowledge in a lot of different areas, and he could go on and on and on. I could just listen to him all day with <laughs> all the stuff that he knows. But if there's specific things that you're looking for, like within your site, or you want to make things easier, I promise you, Evan knows of a tool that will make it easy and simple because this is all he does, and um, so he's a wealth of information. And, I, and he's in the Facebook group, so now now you actually have an opportunity to hear from him. So if you have any questions or you want to ask anything, please feel free yeah. to, to do it on the Facebook group. Don't, and he's really good uh, about getting back to people. Yeah, don't hesitate to ask. I'm not I'm not going to bite your head off. Don't worry. <laughs> um, it may seem that way. I'm really an, an actually a nice person. Very very approachable. <laughs> very helpful. He is. And uh, but I don't I don't. I don't pull punches. I don't sugarcoat anything. Kate can attest to that. Yep. And I'm going to tell you how I feel about it, but I may not be the end-all be-all in all situations, but um, I tend to know what will work and what will work better. So feel free to ask away anything you want my opinion on. I'm there for you. Yes. And uh, it's, yep. it's constructive criticism. I always send Evan stuff, and, and when I yep. get – when I get back up, I like it. I'm really excited. When I get back up, I love it. I am beyond excited because it's hard to get that out of it. <laughs> but it's good because he pushes you to be better. And as as he always says, you, it can always be better. So that is true. Um, <clears throat> so, Evan, thank you again. I know that we're going to um, bring you back on actually next week. Um, you're, he's, he's going to be speaking at um, an affiliate summit. But we also are going to be doing some our next one on social media marketing, which is another topic I know everyone's really excited about. So social media on a budget is what we're doing next week. For this week, um, I'll be sending out the recording of this session will be up by tomorrow. And I'll also be sending out um, a quick uh, form 
for you guys to fill out that just kind of goes through your website and, and you can do like a little checkbox. Yes, I have this. No, I don't have this on your website to kind of keep you on track of what you could potentially change. Um, and then also, as as always, coming up with your three to five action items to complete by the end of this week. So taking a look back at what is that end goal, that end result that you were looking to achieve by the end of this eight weeks, and then putting together those action items. Um, and also use that Facebook group. You know, use that group if you have any questions or you need feedback on something that you're working on, you want to get people's opinions or you want to get anything um, out of Evan or myself, definitely use that. Or of course, you can email me and uh, we'll get back to you as well. Um, so thank you guys for jumping on the call today. I'm excited for this week. I'm excited to hear from all of you. Like I said, I'll be reaching out to you now that we're kind of midway through the class. I wanted to get um, some feedback and see what you guys are, where you guys are and how I can support you because that is uh, my goal for, for this course was really to make sure that each of you walk away with um, feeling like you made a really good investment and that we were able to move you steps forward in your business. So I'll be talking to each of you this week. And um, we'll look forward to next Monday at 730 when we talk about social media. So thank you guys. I really appreciate it. If we didn't get to your website and you want a review, um, just email me and uh, Evan and I can, can do that with you. Thank you again, Evan. No problem. Thanks Evan. for having me. Have a great night, everyone. Bye-bye.